Our guest for today's Touch Basins Hall is Swedish photographer and visual artist Erik Johansson, who creates surreal images using photo manipulation techniques. His realistic depictions of impossible scenes, such as a lake shattering like a mirror, a woman emerging from an escalator in a dark forest, or a dog floating in the air like a balloon. They have men mesmerized viewers around the world, and currently he's holding his solo exhibition in his whole titled Beyond Imagination that will run until March next year. And I'm delighted to say that he joins us now via video call. Mr. Johansson, hello and welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Happy to be here. Yes, it's uh, really great to have you with us today. As I said, you're a photographer and visual artist that creates these incredible works of surrealist photography. Can you tell us a little bit more about how you got into making such works? Understand that you initially studied computer engineering at university. <clears throat> yeah, that, that is true. I, um, I guess I've, I've always been a visual person. I've always been a person that likes to uh, create things. Um, in a visual way. I, as a kid, I liked drawing and, and painting. And when I grew up and, and got my first digital camera, I immediately got interested in how much can you modify a photograph and still keep it look realistic. Mm. Um, and I think the way that I got into it was just that I, I started by experimenting to see how much you could change a photograph. And over time, it became natural to me to try to uh, bring a story into the picture more and more. So it's been a very gradual transition, I guess. But uh, um, in a way, it's about like trying to capture something that isn't there, uh, but make it look as if it was. And I think mm. that has the engineering approach to it somehow, that it's the problem solving way of, of trying to create a photograph more than capturing a photograph. You said you got into it gradually, that it was a gradual process. Uh, but then what mm. uh, would you say was your first work that made you realize uh, that this is something that you wanted to continue doing? Well, I guess in the beginning, it was a lot about just trying to see how much you can modify a photograph in, in simple ways. It was like uh, changing the colors, trying to maybe take a photograph of my hand and just adding one extra finger to see if it looks realistic. <laughs> or just like uh, cutting out my sisters and putting them on a rooftop and, and showing to my mom. <laughs> but uh, it was like over time, uh, as I got my, like uh, when I got my first DSLR camera, I realized that the picture quality was much better. And I realized that what if I would spend also more time on the post-production process in order to see uh, if I can create something more interesting and, and not instead of just spending hours on a picture that I could spend days on a picture. Mm. So I think uh, when the cameras became better, uh, I also it motivated me to also spend more time in post-production. When did you realize that your works were starting to connect with people, that you were getting an interesting reaction out of people? Well, I guess when I, uh, yeah, when I started to incorporate the story more into the picture and, and uh, try to figure out how I can uh, capture that story in one single frame and, and started, yeah, started spending more time on the, on the idea more than just making it look visually pleasing. I guess that's when it started connecting more with people and, uh, I mean, it was still a hobby at that time. It was just uh, just something I did for fun. But for some reason, I guess, uh, yeah, I don't know. Like people liked what I did, I guess. And and uh, even though it was just a hobby, so I, I did guess I did it did motivate me and and to to spend even more time on the products and and that's pretty much what happened. So um, yeah, I, I would say that the audience and and feeling the connection with people has really also motivated me to create more as well. So it's always been important and the the, the community on the internet and and around me and mm. showing people and getting feedback on the works. Then how do you transition that from a hobby into becoming having a profession with this, so becoming an artist? Yeah. I, uh, so basically, I started doing it on a more serious level while I was still studying computer engineering. And uh, when I was done studying, I just felt like I wanted to try this out to see what if I could actually make a living doing this for a while before starting uh, starting working as an engineer, more or less. Uh, and at the time, it was more about trying to help out other photographers with retouching, doing smaller photo jobs and stuff like this, a lot of commission work. Uh, but I was always focused on like spending a certain amount of time on the personal work. And I think it just uh, the fact that I did still spend the time 
time on the personal work gives me to create my own direction in where where I wanted my work to go instead of just letting the commission work decide that. Mm. And uh, over time, uh, I, I started getting some exhibition requests. And and I guess when I got re- exhibition re- exhibition requests, I also started selling some prints. And I guess that's pretty much uh, when I started to be able to make a living as an artist. And today, I would say that I do a little bit of commission work, but my main, uh, my absolutely main part of my work is is to create just these images. So. I think anyone who has seen your images will find them very arresting and uh, quite fascinating. Can you tell us a little bit about your creative process? How do you get your ideas to make your uh, images from? What's your inspiration? Yeah, it's it's a pretty long process. Usually an idea is not just born in an instant. It's more of a, uh, trying to capture small things that, that come to me uh, through my life, uh, th- through my everyday life, pretty much. Uh, when I see something that I find interesting, I try to sketch it down. And uh, inspiration in general, I would say, uh, is, is mainly from, uh, I mean, just daily life, just like seeing what's happening around me and trying to figure out how can I incorporate that into a story somehow. Um, I mean, of course, going to an art exhibition, seeing other people's work is also very inspiring in a way, but it's really a lot of the time uh, coming up with ideas. It's just about trying to like reflect on things around me and, and trying to figure out how I can capture that in one single frame. And yeah, I kind of like that challenge to try to like create a story, but you just have one frame and, uh, it's a nice, uh, I think it helps the viewer also to kind of like figure out how did it become like this and what happens mm. right after the moment we're seeing here. And how long does it take to create a work? You said uh, it used to take you uh, just a few hours, but now I'm guessing it takes uh, days, possibly even weeks then. Yeah, it, it's uh, as it's personal work, it doesn't really have a deadline. And uh, I don't want to just drag it out for, <laughs> for the sake of dragging it out. But I do realize that it's usually quite good just to work on it a bit and leave it for a while and then come back to it and keep on working on it because it's my only way to kind of try to see it objectively. So uh, I would say, I mean, I, I create around eight to 10 new pieces every year. Um, but uh, but the, the process of just finishing one work can usually take several months, uh, sometimes even years, because it's a lot about like trying to find a perfect location. And I, I need to photograph all the different parts myself. So it, it can be a very long process sometimes just finding all those pieces for the puzzle. Um, but I always work on several parallel, and that's how I, I manage to do it, that I, I jump from one product to another and just in order to kind of forget about one a bit and then come back mm. to it to try to see it in a new way. I think uh, it's important to let our listeners know that your work is not uh, just about photoshopping. You have to have an actual photo to start with first, right? It's not just uh, computer generated. Yeah, yeah it, it, it's a good uh, good thing to explain <laughs> in, mm. in radio that, that you do have... Uh, um, I mean, the realism has always been very central to me that I, I wanted to really feel like it's a place that could exist, even if it has impossible elements. And uh, I think the best way to really make something look realistic is to try to photograph it. And mm. uh, so I have a, I mean, everything that you see in my work is, is just photographs that I have photographed. So it's, there are no illustrated elements or computer generated elements. Uh, uh, it's like limiting in a way for me, but it's also, I think, limitations can also help for creativity because creativity is just such a big uh, big thing that it's kind of hard to grasp and i think mm. limitations helps you direct the creativity in a certain direction so i i don't mind that it takes time and, and uh, that it's a little bit tricky sometimes i just think it's it makes it more interesting can you now tell us uh, about your latest solo exhibition here in seoul it's called beyond imagination is there a running theme or is it more of a general collection it's uh, I would say there are certain themes, uh, but there is uh, it, it is a general collection of my work that I've produced over the pa- ta- past 10 years, but it's divided into a few sections to kind of create a certain amount of uh, consistency within each section. Um, but but it's also important that each picture is pretty much its own story. So it's not like they are really connected. It's more about it's almost like you're walking around and looking into windows into other worlds and uh, uh, even though some topics and themes are similar, I, I think it's still important that that each work is is standing by its own kind of. 
it's it's a very big exhibition for me and i think it's very exciting space also to be exhibiting on the top floor of the 63 building it just creates such a such a surreal experience to exhibit up in the clouds almost mm. uh, so uh, i i think it's a it's the most amazing place i've exhibited in and and i think it really like brings something to the work as well because i think when you're walking around you almost forget about that you're up in the sky and then all of a sudden you come to a window and you just can just enjoy the beautiful view of, of seoul as well so uh, uh, i'm very happy to uh, to be able to do such a big exhibition here and i i, uh, I think they really the, the team that i worked with we i think it really worked out really well with the uh, how we put it together and also a certain amount of playfulness as well so which i i, I think it, uh, the idea is not just that the works are creative but i think it's also that you, you should feel like it's a creative environment and you should mm. feel inspired after you come to the exhibition as well so i hope that that's what people feel as well right just to explain for our listeners the 63 building is one of the uh, tallest buildings here in central's hole and this uh, art space is almost at the top i think i believe the 60th floor of the building and you get uh, a, a, a sort of panoramic view of the city as well from there i believe this is your fourth exhibition in seoul now is that right it is uh not in seoul but in, in korea yeah mm. since the past two years pretty much so um uh, we had a bit of a pause during the pandemic, mm, of <laughs> but I'm very excited that uh, to be back again in Seoul and and, and to uh, to show my work and and uh, do it again with a with a much bigger exhibition with a lot of new works. So um, always very happy to exhibit and come to Korea. So so it was a great experience for me this time as well. Uh, what do you think keeps bringing you back to Korea? Do you think your works have struck a particular chord with Korean audiences? Yeah, it's a very good question. Um, I think it's always a bit different wherever you exhibit. I think when I, I had a small exhibition here close to my hometown, and then it's more the experience of that people recognize the places and they're like, oh, is this road <laughs> like uh, over there? And, uh, and and when you exhibit maybe in another country and, and somewhere far away, it becomes a bit more... Um, Maybe it's just a, the, the dreaminess and the it, it's a bit exotic in a way, but also I think it's also topics that everyone can relate to and, and feel connected to. So um, I'm not sure exactly why it works, but uh, I don't know. I, I, th I think it's just uh, I'm happy that, that people feel connected to it the same way that that people in other places do as well. So, so it kind of shows that we're all together somehow and we all kind of think just in a similar way. So. Sure, and it's a very significant exhibition because uh, I understand it's being split into two. Episode one is on display until March next year, but then there's a second ex episode yeah. uh, coming after that, which will be on view until October next year. So uh, plenty of time for people yep. here in Korea to check it out. Finally, what's... And the, 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 it's supposed to be, the, the episode two is supposed to be also a lot of new works and we're going to rebuild everything as well. So it's supposed to be a different experience as well. So... Uh will be exciting to, to do that as well. Definitely sounds fascinating. Finally, what's next for you? Do you have any projects or plans that you're creating on next? I saw on your website that uh, you started making videos, looping videos of some of your surreal images. Yeah, I, I, I am experimenting a bit with video. I think it's, it's not for all products. I think sometimes it can be interesting. Um, because I, I do feel limited by the, the fact that I only have one frame. And sometimes I feel like it could add something to the story that, that you have, a, you know, a certain amount of movement or that it feels like it still feels like one moment, but there's something more happening in that moment. So like you're stuck in a moment, but it but it feels a little bit more alive. And I think it's something I will keep experimenting with a bit for some of my work. Uh, not all products fits this format, I would say, but but it's something that I'm trying to explore now. And apart from that, I'm, I'm trying to work with a lot of new products now that I want to finish for the episode two as well. So I'm very excited to, to share these uh, as well in the coming months. So. Well, once again, we've been speaking to photographer and visual artist Eric Johansson, whose exhibition Beyond Imagination is on view in Seoul at the 63 Sky Art Gallery until March 6th. Mr. Johansson, thank you once again for sharing your time with us today. Thanks for having me.